Welcome to Section 1-6 Probability, Algebra 2 with Mr. Polarski. I'm your host, Mr. Polarski, and I hope you enjoy your ride. Today we're going to talk about theoretical and experimental probability. Most math students are familiar with the theoretical probability, what's supposed to happen, like the probability of flipping a coin. The probability of flipping a coin is 50% for the heads, 50% for the tails. That's not always true, and that's where experimental probability comes in. Experimental probability, just like theoretical probability, is a ratio. The probability of an event occurring is the number of times the event will occur over the actual number of trials that were taken for the experiment. In our example one, we're talking about experimental probability. A player hit the bullseye on a circular dartboard eight times out of 50. Find the experimental probability the player hits the bullseye. So based on the previous results, we're going to predict the probability that the player is going to hit the bullseye again. Uh, to do this, we are going to need to write out our probability. To write that out, we use a capital P indicating the probability and parenthesis to enclose the event that we're that will be successful, so the probability of hitting a bullseye. And that should be pretty simple. Uh, the expected number of times he's going to hit it, or the number of times he actually did hit it, was eight. That would be the successful outcomes, or the number of times the outcome occurred. Over 50, the total number of turns that he took at trying to hit the bullseye, which would be 50. Now that fraction is not reduced, it can reduce by a factor of 4. Reducing that by a factor of 4 means to divide both the numerator and the denominator by, I'm sorry, by a factor of 2. That means to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, which is going to give us 4 over 25. You could convert that into a percent, which would be 16%. Number of ways to do it, but when the denominator is 25, to figure out the percent, you just multiply by the numerator by 4. So he has a 16% chance of hitting a bullseye based on this experimental probability. A simulation is a model of one or more events when the actual experiment would be different or difficult to complete or too large to sample space to try to find out. Sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes, and that is necessary when you're talking about a theoretical probability. And you'll need, uh, we'll learn later how to count sample spaces, but theoretical probability of event A is the probability of M over N, or the ratio of M over N, and M represents the possible or the successful outcomes or ways that you could win at a game and n is the total number of outcomes. What you see in the box there is very textbook definition of the theoretical probability. A simpler way to understand it is as you can see I'm writing here in green the probability of an event A is the number of successful outcomes over the total number of outcomes. That total number of outcomes on the, in the denominator uh, represents the sample space, and there are counting techniques that we will learn at a later date to help us count. In example three, we're being asked to find the theoretical probability of rolling a multiple of three with a number cube. Uh, another way to refer to a number cube would be a die. You know, a pair of dice that you roll when you play craps, well, a number cube would be a single die. It has numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So to find this probability, you need to determine how many multiples of 3 are on a number cube. Again, we use the probability notation, the probability of 
rolling a multiple of three that's how you would write it out there are two multiples of three on a die that would be the number three and the number six and that does reduce to the fraction one-third so you have a one-third chance or one out of three chance or a 33 and a third percent chance or 33.3 repeating chance or heck let's round it 33 percent chance of rolling a multiple of three when rolling a number cube here we have a Punnett square brown is a dominant eye color for human beings if a father and mother each carry a gene for brown eyes and a gene for blue eyes what is the probability of having a child with blue eyes. Well, the dominant genes, you know, if you have one dominant gene and one recessive gene, the dominant gene is going to take place. You can see the Punnett square. The two recessive genes are necessary. That only occurs one time, so the probability of blue eyes is going to be one out of four, or 25 percent. One chance out of four to have blue eyes if both the mother and the father have the dominant gene for brown eyes and the recessive gene for blue eyes. I want to thank you for watching today. I hope today's lesson on probability, both theoretical and experimental, was helpful. If you find my channel or any of my videos useful, please feel free to leave a comment or simply click to rate the video. I appreciate it. Have a good day and study hard.